My name is Rhapsody and welcome to The Crow's Eye. The Crow's Eye is a psychological investigation puzzle game. The debut title from 3D2 Entertainment. It will be available on Steam as of March 20th. So this is a little bit of a preview for the first couple of episodes. Uh, now we're pretty much entirely on the same page. We know as much as each other. Ain't that feel good? Well, okay, I know slightly more because I had to do a test recording, but that's about it. So I've got to move the slider until the image is barely visible. This happens in pretty much every single horror game that I've ever played. Uh, it does tag itself in some of the information that I've seen around as having slight horror elements. So I'm actually going to bump this a little higher than I usually would. I can see it from all the way down here. But I'm going to bump it a little higher because I happen to know that the YouTube encoding process crushes crushes colors down and actually like enhances the blacks so it becomes really really difficult to see things in games like this so i'm gonna be holding it a little bit higher than i typically would for a solo playthrough all characters appearing in this game are fictitious any resemblance to real persons living or dead is purely coincidental That's right, don't let him get his hands on you. <sighs> and we awake in a relatively Victorian era, or at the very least, posh room. It's one of the two. Oh, University of Crowswood, 1966. So I was wrong entirely. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. What do I mean, Victorian era? This shit is obviously electrically powered? Lamp? Dude, I couldn't tell you for the life of me. I don't know shit from shit. There was uh, Layers of Fear. I had the exact same problem where I looked around and I could not tell a single thing at all about the actual time in which it occurred. I had to wait until the information came up on the screen to tell me. Okay, press V to play it. Oh, so this is kind of like the Bioshock 1. Pick something up and then play the audio log. Let's do it. Okay, so we don't know exactly who spoke that note. We can see over here in recordings, author, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question uh, mark. Press tab to exit the inventory and use the quick inventory. Uh, use Q. Oh, okay. So I can scroll along these with the mouse wheel. Beautiful. Use Q to use items in the quick inventory. Ah, ha, ha. Does this have any sort of a, a fuel system that I am running out of? Is it that kind of thing? Amnesia calls and wants its information about oil in a lamp back. No, none of these are openable. We did throw a bottle before. Let's pick up another one. I can zoom as well. Ah, beautiful. Is that zoom or does it actually functionally bring it closer or further? Okay, it looks like it actually functionally brings it closer or further. That might be important at some point in the future. But for now, destroy the shit out of all of the bottles. Lovely. Alright, well, we've got the obvious door on the way out. Need a key to open the door. Fair enough. That's already pre-inspected. Up. Oh. Hey, hey! That had to be where it was, right? They draw you over there to get the audio log and then wait, there just happens to be the advancement path along here. Uh, something I did know when I was actually trying to, or something I did note, rather, when I was trying to do the test recording, is there's this fucking thing up in the corner. Which should have tipped me off that it wasn't Victorian, right? And it follows you. Someone's watching. As you walk through rooms that will be unlocked on the map, press F to expand the map and find your current location. Okay, beautiful, as you can see... Don't even remember. <laughs> I 
All right, well, that was Mark Hamill as, uh, as the Joker there. So I imagine we're working in, like, when I say amnesia here, I don't mean amnesia the game. I mean amnesia, uh, I think we're working in that kind of a trope idea of you've woken up and you don't remember anything, but you've been here before kind of idea. Uh, nothing interactable, at least, that I can find in this room. For the sake of anyone that is going to pick it up to play it themselves, I just want to mention that over here in videos, if you want to increase your frames per second by like 20, just turn off screen, uh, screen space reflection. All it does is make reflective surfaces actually reflect, but it tanks the frames, uh, at the very least for my PC, especially while I'm recording, because that's also an intensive progress. Process, rather. Picked up cloth, beautiful. This is sparking at me, and... Okay, I'll just remove that, I guess. So I guess it's got the kind of, like, here's something shining system. Which is gonna make it relatively simple, I have to imagine, to realize what you're supposed to be interacting with. Because that's the step that I make every single time in a puzzle game, is find all of the interactables and then decide exactly how they go together. Material shapes and arrangements... I have to imagine it's not going to be relevant. Nothing here. I mean, centerpiece of the room, main desk. Usually you'd find something. Uh, I actually seem to recall that that clock is different to the clock in the other room. In terms of time, specifically. Nothing again. Science is the religion of the modern world. Nice. I'm on board. I'm on board with all that. Badger brand... Where are we going to find the next interactable? It's got to be over here, right? It's got to be something you're drawn towards. However, I mean, we did have the interactable here. I'm assuming I can't just... Yeah, beautiful. Just making certain that I couldn't just jump up there and I've just been an absolute nonsense lord about this whole thing so far. I'm just going to continue breaking all of these because eventually... You'll break one of them and it'll have a key in it and I'll look like a gosh dang genius that I've been doing it the entire game. Not that one though. Or, this door is actually open, I'm just being in- yep. Okay! <laughs> uh, I imagine this is a tutorial to teach you how to jump. Yeah, looks like it. I'm gonna close all doors behind me as well. Just on the basis of the fact that I know the kind of genre we're working in. Oh. Oh, I wanted the piano to get angry at me and slam its lid shut, a la Layers of Fear. Okay, so we've actually got a relatively open domain here. Beautiful. Well, let's go down all of the paths that I think will lead nowhere first. I think I might actually benefit from turning the sound up a fair bit here. Because a lot of the things that I feel are supposed to be jarring are just a little too low in my headphones for me to hear. 303, okay. Locked room, beautiful. I have to imagine at some point I'll find a key that's labeled 303 or something similar. Not really a viable escape path, it looks like. So this is apparently all an experiment. I'm imagining kind of like a Saw 2 style... Is that just that the light hadn't rendered? Or that it's turning on as I get closer? I'm imagining a Saw 2 kind of style of a house that just has a bunch of different rooms. Each of those rooms has a challenge or a point. And you have to contest with them. Nothing. Close all doors behind me. Oh, of course. The mandatory bloodstains. Leading up to the toilet, though, they're less scary than concerning. 
Pictures of students missing in class. Ronald Herrera, Samantha Smith, Jack Mears, and Edward Shipman. I have to imagine this is going to be saved as one of our notes, right? Yeah. Again, author not known. Can I open this? No, not at all. Oh, well, fair enough. As long as we found at the very least one thing, I think we can strike this one out as having been explored. Oh, like an old style kind of uh, malt shop recipe. Recipe rather, menu. Ah, okay. It definitely seems like that's the case then. We've got locked into the room that we've just walked in again. Saw 2 kind of idea being a little reinforced there. <clears throat> uh, I'll actually convert this to text. March 28th, 1947. So that is uh, 19 years prior. A letter from Benjamin Bennett to his wife, Carolyn Bennett. Dear Carolyn, I'm writing this letter as I promised. I'm going to write to you every day, but you know how forgetful I am. If I fail to write one day, please don't panic. This university is truly unique and inspires respect. Apparently, it used to be an old mansion that was remodeled as a medical university. Upon arrival, the principal has offered me to stay in a dorm within the university as the residence is full and there's no room for anyone else. The policemen are occupying the dorms that remained. It seems that the police are ahead of my investigation. I must talk to talk to them. <laughs> I must talk to talk to... No, that, that's how it's written. Uh, although, it's as if I was a nuisance. They aren't very happy about me being here. And that makes me somewhat reluctant when it comes to dealing with them. I'll keep you posted about my progress in the case. And please don't worry. I'll spare you the grisly details, pumpkin. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't want you to worry. Love you, your favorite private detective, Benjamin Bennett. It's presumptive as shit. What if she likes other private detectives? What if she's a huge fan of Sherlock, bud? You don't know. Okay. Beautiful, I can just jump across the other side. There's no zooming that I can do here, but Crowswood County News seems to be a newspaper in the very area, I'd have to imagine, considering we're in the Crowswood University. So it's a medical university that used to be a mansion. Got it. Alright, so if we're to escape from here, we are going to have to find some sort of a puzzle that we are supposed to solve. Although none of these things seem interactable so far. Nor you. Whoop. You? Come on, you look like a prime target for interactability. No, no, no. You can crouch, you can do jump, you can do all of the kind of standard first-person controls. A lot of these games try and rob you of being able to crouch and jump, just so that they can kind of restrict your vision and have a more tailored experience. I understand that. I do understand that, but it also does feel like player agency is in some way being taken away. Oh. Oh, ha, ha, ha. okay. That's the world we live in. So it's a physics platformer as well. Take that back up. Yeah, I can. Nope. Not if I drop it immediately. Beautiful. I wonder if you can bunny hop or crouch jump or anything like that in this game. Come on. Over the wall. Over the wall, bud. Oh, right. Zoom. Zoom towards me. There we go. You're kidding me. Get up here. Can I not take it over? Is the point that I'm supposed to leave it in this room? If the puzzle is, hey, go into this room and learn that physics objects exist. It's hardly a puzzle as much as a... Well, I mean, I guess we still are in the tutorial part of the game. Yeah, it looks like it actually just can't traverse beyond this. Ooh, creaking door. Someone's moving about in here. Lights? Nope, no lights. Have to imagine no camera, no action either. Well, this one I can't interact with, so something's gonna pop out of there at some point. 
Oh no, there's a bunch I can't interact with. Sorry, out of service. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, so ladder X1 makes me believe that maybe you can hold more than one ladder at a time in this game. Which actually further instills the idea of it being a primarily physics-based puzzler. But on top of that, I already know where I'm going to use this in the vent in the other room. Oh, okay, it's just a save game. Fine. Is that going to open it all? No, it's just going to play generic spooky sound underscore 06. And leave it at that. Oh, they bought many copies of that same poster. Need a key to open this door, despite the fact there's no lock on it. Don't worry, don't mind if I do, bud. I'll come back with one. I already know exactly where I'm going. Over here... Hello, events. Until it's proven that... Oh, okay. So it actually shows you exactly where it would go. Cool. Until it's proven that this game manipulates surroundings when you're not there, I'm not going to be doing a lot of backtracking. It looks like there might be some mass up at the end of the... Oh, no. It's just shadows. Whoop. Note. Don't mind if I do... Okay, uh, I'm assuming this is prior because it's, it's been two days since I left. Hang on. Let me actually quickly check. No, that's the first one. So this is the second note a day later. And apparently I'm not going to read it. No. March 29th, 1947. My dearest Carolyn, it's been two days since I left and I'm already missing you. I'm grateful this is something temporary and we'll be seeing uh, each other in a few days. Uh, I stammer when I write, too. We won't be far from each other for too long. Barely a few hours keep us apart. How's our little one doing? I'm really looking forward to seeing you both. I'm sleeping on a couch and I'm not really able to rest at ease. I've seen several photographs of the missing people and their faces barely let me sleep. They're all stuck in my mind. Edward Shipman, Romualdo... Romwald, yep, Romualdo Herrero, Samantha Smith, and Jack Muse. The names seem taken from those novels you adore. Maybe she does like uh, the kind of detective novels specifically. I mentioned it before, but to be fair, those do seem relatively similar to the names you'd find there. Uh, it's so sad they all missing the way they did. I don't even want to imagine what their parents must be going through. If our son had gone missing... I don't even want to think about it. By the way, do you happen to remember my old friend Ricardo Herrera, the politician? It looks like one of the young missing lads, Romualdo Herrero, is his nephew. What a coincidence. I've been thinking about it, and I hope that getting back to the work will be useful for me in a way. I'm taking it as a treatment to return to normality. The problem is the police mock me and aren't making it easy. Love you both, Benjamin Bennett. P.S. I look forward to receiving your letters. So I have to imagine by this point he's still not received a letter back. She's doing the old treat him mean, keep him keen strategy. The heck? Oh, okay, right, no, it was falling. Beautiful. I'm not the first person to have climbed through these vents, apparently. But I am the first person to treat that vent like a goddamn trampoline. Thank you for the tape. Something shining over here. Ah, right, of course I can push and pull. Had to imagine so. Ah, new note. March 29th, 1947. Four students gone missing in a university as prestigious as this one. And Director Holtwick gives me a week to help him sort this out. I don't even know where to start. And why only seven days? Thankfully, the police force will do anything necessary to solve the case. My hands, however, are tied. Why contract a private detective for such a few days? I don't understand. But if it hadn't been for 
for that. I wouldn't have accepted the job. All right, so I have to imagine that is the voice of Benjamin Bennett then. Oh, beautiful new note from Benjamin Bennett. Dear Carolyn, a day after the previous note we've read. I haven't received any reply from you yet. Is everything all right? I need to hear from you. Look, the voice has been changing over time. It was it was originally much more straight laced, and now it's uh, now it's very very off the wall kind of error based deep drinking detective. No, I've had a really rough night. I couldn't sleep, and I've taken too much medication. Let's change it back to a little more straight laced. <clears throat> I've fallen into a deep sleep, and I've had nightmares that look extremely real. In the last nightmare I remember, I was in cliffs so dark you couldn't see the end of it. And after a while, feeling anxiety and having my heart in a fist, I jumped into the void, and as I fell, I felt better. I've also had several nightmares in which our sun appeared. You know how bad it is when this happens. I'd rather not share anything in this regard. I've been talking to William Holtwick, the principal of the university. I intend to interrogate him, and he's turned somewhat into my psychologist and has provided moral support. He has pointed out that he already knew about my condition, hence why he hasn't set any margins or limits for me. I seem to believe it would accept. I would accept collaborating in the case with him under these circumstances. The truth is that opening up to him has encouraged me a little. The case is turning out to be rather complicated. We've been questioning all the faculty and students in the university, but we haven't achieved anything remarkable yet. Waiting for your reply, love you both, Benjamin Bennett. So we've currently got tape and cloth as our only two interactables in our inventory. Unless, of course, I can go back and pick up the ladder from the previous room. I don't know if I want to move that. I guess this is probably a supply closet, so let's do this one first. Beautiful. I'm assuming this it. Dang it! I was assuming this wasn't going to lead anywhere. Ah, okay. Right, right, right. I know exactly where we are now. Never mind, that wasn't interactable, it was just a door, and this puts us on the other side of the rubble foliage. Beautiful. I thought I needed a key for 303. Right? This is room 303. Okay, so it was blocked, but it still gives you the prompt you need a key. Fair enough. My job, should I choose to accept it, and I do, is to break priceless artifacts in this museum, and museum, this university, and also, while I'm at it, if I happen to discover the whereabouts of the missing students, why, I mean, that's just gravy, baby. Okay, light falls off the ceiling, but, more importantly, there's a note. Okay, well, I mean, we are of the era where people thought, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder was just, you know, people faking it. In fact, a lot of mental maladies were considered the same. <clears throat> From Carolyn Bennett? Yeah, okay, so she actually responded two days after our previous one. Does March have a 31st? March 31st, that sounds about right. Okay, three days after the previous one. Dear Ben, as strange as it may be, I... Look, I'm not going to be able to do that. Dear Ben, as strange as it may be, I don't know why none of my letters is reaching you. Ah, oh, reaching you. I certainly hope this one does. Next time the postman comes, I'll ask him. Having a special mailing service for the agents involved in the case is certainly something, but it seems my letters are getting lost. If you're having a tough time, you can leave it. Your health always comes first. Nevertheless, we'll see each other in a few days, so hold on to that thought. Please. Go easy on the medication. You're perfectly aware that it doesn't do you any good, as the doctor told you. Eh? What medication doesn't do you any good? 
If I find out you're overdosed on the medication again, you and I will have a very serious conversation when you return home. I want that when you come back home, you be, you can be at ease and think that getting back to the routine was worth. Word would underline that and say, sentence fragment, consider revising. It is indeed a coincidence that Ricardo Herrero is one of the missing people. Ricardo Herrero isn't one of the missing people. Romueldo Herrero is one of the missing people. Ricardo Herrero is the uncle of that missing person. You already know my thoughts on this. I always say coincidences don't exist. By the way, doesn't the uh, surname Holtwick sound familiar to you? Not me in particular, but it does sound slightly familiar. Okay, I have to imagine I don't need the block in here. Ooh, is this gonna be a recipe? Yes, it is, okay. I can make a roll of gauze, maybe? Is it gonna tell me what that's an inventory? Uh, inventory, sorry. Is it gonna tell me what that does? To craft a bandage, okay. Right, so that crafts two bandages. Hey, beautiful. Not that I think I'll need them. I do have a health bar in this game, so I have to imagine if you've got a health bar and you've got a crafting system and you can craft healing items, that the health bar is not going to refill itself over time. So I'm going to try and be exceedingly sparing with my use of them. I guess my job was just to come in here in order to get this. Take it elsewhere. Or not. Yeah, it looks like definitely an or not on that one. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, I see a shiny in the distance. It... Gimme. 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 Oh, what the fuck? What? That motherfucker wasn't even in there. That's a cheap scare game. That is a cheap scare. I didn't even do anything to incite that- Oh, right, sorry, I forgot. There's an impenetrable, invisible barrier that affects only cubes. Specifically in that area. Right, fine, let's make our way out. I think I came from that direction, so we'll be going in the other direction. Nothing, nothing, and just a buttload more nothing I'm finding. Ah, so that was for opening 304. I'm concerned some of the textures may not have loaded in here. But it does seem even on both sides. I've had lecture halls that look relatively similar to this, so... March 30th, 1947. Today I went to interrogate Rector Holtwick. A curious subject, as there ever was. He seems to be a smart and cult man. He defends his ideals regarding the advance in all fields of medicine, be it physical or mental. And what strikes me the most is that he has no qualms in flattering other scientists whose methods aren't the least orthodox. Okay, one thing I really wanted to quickly check here is I've been talking to William Holtwick, the principal of my university. So... Rector Holtwick is the person that he's talking about in that uh, that slide. We are to believe that the person that was just speaking was Benjamin uh, Benjamin Bennett. So I'm being told that there is a Rector Holtwick who is a scientist. A smart and cult man. Never heard cult used as an adjective, but there you go. I'm open to the changing definitions in language. That's more than fine by me. 7256, have to imagine that's a code we're going to need at some point. Oh. Maybe at this point. There we go. Uh, to enter a number, you must turn the wheel towards that number, and once you reach that number, turn the wheel in the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, 7246. So 7, 2, 4, 6. No? Hang on. Is it not 7246? 7256, I'm the world's worst. All right. 7, 
two, five, six. Beauty! New record! <laughs> the key you've just obtained opens the door to the floor below! Go there. We're going to add some difficulty. I hope you don't mind. Hmm? <laughs> I'm warning you. I'm not going to intervene during the level. I trust you're not going to chicken out <laughs> okay, well, I have to imagine, I have to imagine that it's just going to be more enemies. The last one was just shake your mouse and the enemy is gone, so perhaps that should be my default reaction. Shake the shit out of my mouse, just shake, shake, shake it off like Taylor Swift keeps saying. Let's save the game. And also, at the same time, end the episode. My name is Rune Rhapsody. The name of the game has been The Crow's Eye. There is a link in the description down below to the store page where you can pick it up for yourself. Or at the very least, wait until March 20th when you will be able to do so. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.